Hi, a oh, very good evening, all of you. So welcome to today's live session. In this dinner session, we'll have a case-based question, case-based discussion, and we'll have a presentation in the process. And also we'll have some discussion relevant to the topic. That's the focus of this case-based discussion. I hope you guys are all ready. So, uh, before we start, how are you guys doing? Harita, hi Harita, Shweta. Hi Tahir, Rishikesh, Neeru. Hi, a oh, very good evening all of you. So if you guys are ready, we can jump into our presentation. I mean, I can't jump from here. It's way too dangerous. It's all space out here. But you, you guys can jump. Uh, because of gravity, you'll, you'll be in the place where you are sitting or standing right now. So no risk factor over there. Okay, so uh, let's start with our presentation now. So case-based discussions, of course, learning is always fun. So this is the context. We'll start with the context, right? And then we'll move on to the options. So the context is a 32-year-old male was admitted in cardiology ward after he complains or complained of uh, chest pain. His clinical and biochemical investigations indicated that he suffered a mild myocardial infarction. He has a family history of early heart disease. So timely intervention and appropriate treatment luckily saved him from death. And the following is his lipid profile data. Before we move on to the lipid profile data, I want you to analyze and decipher the information given over here. And for your convenience, I've highlighted a few keywords in this particular context-based or case-based question, you can see the age, the sex, the chief complaint, and also the consequence of that chief complaint. And most importantly, you have a clue or a hint in the form of a family history, family history of early heart disease. And also you're being provided with additional clues or hints in the form of a profile, lipid profile data. So this is a context. Now let's move on to lipid profile data, right? I haven't given you options yet. I'll, I'm going to give you, okay? I'll just go through the data here. So as you can see, serum total cholesterol is 435 milligrams per deciliter. You can also see the reference range. LDL cholesterol around 360 milligrams per deciliter, HDL, good cholesterol around 40 milligrams per deciliter, VLDL around 35, serum triglycerides in the range of 145. So obviously among the given values, you can see one value is highly skewed, which is nothing but LDL. LDL. Uh, so very high levels of LDL cholesterol, LDLC, which is, uh, which is very conspicuous uh, in the given data. Right? So this is the lipid profile data of this patient. So given the context we have, which one do you think mostly suits the condition he has uh, suffered or has been suffering? So you have the following option. So what's your diagnosis? Uh, diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome, familial hypercholesterolemia. So which one do you think would be a more appropriate uh, diagnosis given the data we have, given the context we have gone through, given the lipid profile data? So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? Diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome, and familial hypercholesterolemia. So it's okay even if you're wrong, it doesn't matter. But try answering because as, as I keep on reminding, active participation is very, very important. Very good, Mayank, Harita, fantastic. So you have adequate uh, number of clues to answer this question, but definitely it's not an easy one. So now let's move on to the discussion and then we'll uh, get back to these options before we conclude the session. So. The references for this uh, particular session are you such an arena biochemistry textbook and also CDC website and American College of Cardiology article. So these are three re references based on which I've compiled the given data. So what is FH? 
familial hypercholesterolemia as Tahir Harita Mayank rightly mentioned option D is right answer. What is familial hypercholesterolemia? As the name itself indicates, the cholesterol levels are abnormally high and it runs in families. You know, uh, it's an autosomal dominant disorder, which is very, very important. There can be homozygous, heterozygous variants, uh, autosomal dominant. So what is familial hypercholesterolemia in the process? You can also make notes as I'll be reviewing some important information. So based on differences which I uh, cited. So familial hypercholesterolemia is a genetic disorder affecting about a one in 250 people and increases the likelihood of heart attacks, coronary artery disease, etc. People with familial hypercholesterolemia, as we have seen the lipid data, lipid profile, they have increased blood levels of low density lipoprotein cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. And also it can be even diagnosed in children and it is uh, in fact diagnosed at a very young age. So as mentioned in Satyanarayan, the patient uh, in this particular context, as you can see, has elevated LDL cholesterol, while other lipid parameters seem to be in the normal range. A, a case of familial hypercholesterolemia can be suspected, which is also called as hyperlipoproteinemia type 2A. We'll get back to that a bit later. So these patients are at an increased risk of coronary artery diseases in third and fourth decades of life. That is at a very young age. So lipid lowering drugs, besides uh, dietary modifications like a low cholesterol diet, low fat diet, regular exercise are advocated in these patients. The important interesting finding here is the reason behind this hypercholesterolemia, which is because of decreased number of LDL receptors. So we'll get back to this a bit later. So familial hypercholesterolemia, as mentioned prior, is a genetic disorder uh, with a quite a good amount of frequency. One of the main signs of familial hypercholesterolemia based on lab parameters is LDL levels. Usually in adults, if LDL cholesterol levels are over 190 milligrams per deciliter, and in case of children, over 160 milligrams uh, per deciliter, a couple with familial history or family history, we can suspect or we can diagnose it as familial hypercholesterolemia, right? Consider these values very, very important. Adults more than 190, children more than 160, as mentioned in CDC website. So before we move on to the clinical features, let's look into the genes which are implicated. And before that, as you can see on screen, a genetic condition causing high cholesterol uh, left untreated can lead to coronary artery disease, heart attacks. You can see the percentages. In case of females, uh, the incidence is by age of 60-30%. In case of males, by age of 50-50%. So finding and treating a female hypercholesterolemia early reduces coronary heart disease risk by about 80%. You know, this is something which is very interesting because Using electronic medical records, coupled with artificial intelligence and machine learning programs, we can actually estimate the risk of familial hypercholesterolemia and uh, treat and save patients. In fact, they have done that extensively and saved several lives in the process of using combination of these electronic records, artificial intelligence and machine learning parameters, which is very interesting. I mean, if you are really interested, you can get back through mail. I'll share more information regarding it. And on the right side, you can see various signs of, okay, it's already given here, familial hypercholesterolemia. So LDL levels over 190 milligrams per deciliter in adults in case of children 160. Family health history of early heart attacks or heart disease. A swollen, painful, at least tendons because of accumulation of cholesterol, xanthomas, right? We'll, we'll get back to that a bit later. Also bumps around knuckles, elbows, or knees. That's fine. Now, let's move on to the genetics of this familial hypercholesterolemia. So what are the genes which are implicated? Since we are saying it is familial, it runs in families, what are the genes that are implicated? So mutations in LDLR gene, that is LDL receptor gene, apolipoprotein B, which is a ligand, and also PCSK9 gene. So these are the three genes which have been implicated. Also, there are so many Yet uh, the research is going on, but mostly, as mentioned in CDC website, mutations in the following three genes. In fact, you can find the corresponding uh, proteins here. LDLC, 
that is LDLC here represents cholesterol. LDLR is a receptor for this cholesterol. So mutations in LDLR, EPO lipoprotein B or EPO B, and PCSK9 genes is implicated in familial hypercholesterolemia. Consider this very, very important. Now, what you're finding here, A, B, C, and D illustrations, explain why there is elevated cholesterol level or increased cholesterol in plasma or serum. It's because of the following reasons. You can see it's a normal case scenario in illustration A. In case of illustration B and C and D, it's abnormal. When LDL receptors are lost or there is mutation, or when there is dysfunction of apolipoprotein B, which is a ligand, help, which helps in carrying LDLC, because of these two mutations, there can be elevated or accumulated uh, amounts of cholesterol in blood. Along with that, gain of function of mutations in PCSK9. If you observe illustration D, PCSK9 actually uh, carries this receptor into the hepatocyte and leads to its destruction. So gain of function of PCSK9 leads to elevated cholesterol levels or loss of function of LDLR or lipoprotein B also leads to elevated levels of cholesterol. So no matter what the reason is, the ultimate result is increased levels of cholesterol as we have just seen LDL abnormally rising. So consider this uh, understanding. The, the, the reason behind this hypercholesterolemia is very, very important. Now, let's quickly move on to the clinical features where we'll try to highlight certain areas. Like, as you can clearly see on the left illustration, xanthomas of Achilles tendon. In fact, xanthomas are considered to be pathognomonic of the disease. Xanthomas are nothing but accumulation of cholesterol, yellowish you know, cholesterol deposits all over the body especially in specific areas such as Achilles tendon. And also there can be accumulation of uh, these cholesterol deposits, lipid materials, fat materials around the iris in an arc shape, as you can see, corneal arcus. So this, is, this finding is called as corneal arcus. Consider this very, very important. And along with that, there can be xanthelasma, that is cholesterol deposits, as we discussed now, in the eye, eyelids, skin, etc. Right. So these are some of the clinical features associated with familial hypercholesterolemia. And this is one interesting finding, which I uh, came across in CDC website, linking COVID-19 with familial hypercholesterolemia. In fact, there is a positive correlation in the sense, those with increased risk of heart attacks are obviously more susceptible to the effects of COVID-19. So let's review some information. So you can go through the second line. People who have serious heart disease are among those more likely to have severe illness from COVID-19. So they're more susceptible. If untreated, people with familial hypercholesterolemia are up to 22 times more likely to have coronary heart disease than those without familial hypercholesterolemia. So as I said, early diagnosis is very much essential in saving these patients, literally from death, okay? So this is another interesting finding which I have come across in regard to this. Now, coming to the options again. So you have seen the context, you have seen the lipid profile, you have answered this already. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? As most of you rightly answered, it's hypolipoproteinemia type 2A or familial hypercholesterolemia. Why did I mention it as hyperlipoproteinemia type 2A specifically here? Because there are different types of uh, lipoproteinemias, hyperlipoproteinemias, of which type 2A, there is drop or decrease in number of LDL receptors as a consequence leading to elevated LDL, right? What about other types of hyperlipoproteinemias? We'll get back to that a bit later in the form of homework question, right? So these are some of the topics associated with uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, which I wanted to highlight in this specific video. I hope you got the gist of this presentation, right? Okay, now, before we conclude the session, I have the following questions for you. And I'm sure you have, uh, you have found out the answers for the previous session questions as well. So the first question is, you can consider this as homework question. The first question is, what are different types of hyperlipoproteinemia? In fact, we have seen that this is a case of familial hypercholesterolemia in specific hyperlipoproteinemia type 2A. 
What about other types? So try finding out. Second question, you've seen other options, diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome. Do you find hypercholesterolemia in other options as well? Try finding out. Third question, well, you've seen a clinical picture of corneal arcus, which is also called as arcus senilis. Senilis, arcus senilis or corneal arcus. Does this corneal arcus affect the vision of the patient? Does it affect? Yes or no? So try finding out. And finally, one of the most commonly asked questions, and I'm sure almost all of you are familiar with this, but try exploring this once again. The fourth and final question, what is good cholesterol? What is bad cholesterol? You know, LDL, which we're talking about is considered as bad cholesterol. Why? And why HDL is considered as highly desirable, okay, but not legal? So try exploring the, uh, this particular question as well, okay? So four questions, you can consider it as your homework and uh, try getting back tomorrow. We'll, we'll start with these questions. I mean, you can uh, post your answers and then we can move on to the next case-based discussion, right? I hope it's clear. So in the process of this entire discussion, we have seen what familiar hypercholesterolemia is all about. And also you have seen various signs, clinical features, the reason behind FH, familial hypercholesterolemia, and the genes which are implicated, we cannot ignore genes, right? And also, finally, we have, we have also seen in the process the lipid profiles, and finally, the treatment part, as mentioned, you know, lipid-lowering drugs, hypolipidemic drugs, which you are familiar with, along with that, dietary modification, lifestyle changes are also very important. Regular exercise, uh, food, which is... Uh, filled with low cholesterol and low fat is recommended as mentioned in Satyanarayana, right? So these are some important relevant points for identity to familiar hypercholesterolemia. I hope it's clear. And if you have any queries, you need any further clarifications, uh, please feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7, right? All fine. So shall we conclude the session in that case? Okay. Okay, then I'll see you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. IST. So just keep working, keep giving your best, and most importantly, believe in yourself. Good night.